How you doing, brothers and sisters? Something been on my heart. Um, and it's something that needs to be addressed, something that needs to be spoken on. And that's the relationship between the brothers and the sisters and a lot of the disagreements, a lot of the misunderstandings about how black women look at black men, how we treat each other. Um, one of the things that came to my attention was a sister speaking on the fact that black women were part of the feminist movement, okay? Black women were never part of the feminist movement. That's a European woman movement. Um, first and foremost, the European women were being taken care of. Their husbands or fathers, they would sit at home. The women would be allowed to sit at home. Um, take care of their children. I see it in the neighborhoods I live in now, except times are changing and now houses need a two-income uh, household. However, in many of the mixed and blended neighborhoods that I've lived in, I've had some of the white women uh, neighbors that uh, live near me come to me in shock and surprise. You're going to work? You're going to work? I'm stunned. I'm looking at her, and she's like, um, but you have children. Exactly. Now, God bless me that I've been married to my husband 20 years. However, I had a son before my husband. I had two sons before my husband and I had gotten together. And um, at the time of their conception, yes, a lot of promises and we'll do this and I'll do that. But that never came about. OK. And the fact of the matter was until God blessed me with my husband, I had to make sure there was food on the table and a roof over our heads. OK. Many women take their children's father to court. I don't have a judgment for that. I did not want to keep taking my son's father to court. I did not want to put him in jail. I watched my brother go to jail for child support. And yes, you should take care of your children. But I truly tried to work it out outside of the court system because I didn't want him to get locked up and something happened. Uh, but I'm going to go back a page. I'm going to go back a page to the point of different people speaking on the fact black women being part of the feminist movement. Black women were never part of the feminist movement. The feminist movement may have come and met, did a meet and greet with black women, but when we were brought here, first let me give the definition of what feminism is. Uh, or basically, I'll start with the definition of a feminist, a person who supports feminism, relating to or supporting feminism. Now let's see what feminism is. Feminism is a range of political movements, ideologies, and social movements that share a common, a common goal to define, establish, and, and achieve political, economic, personal, and social equality of the sexes. This includes seeking to establish educational and professional opportunities for women that are equal to those of men. Well, Initially, when black women were born here, yes, um, we definitely got opportunities equal to men. We were put out in the fields right along beside them, work to bits. As a matter of fact, when they brought us to this country, they would work us to death in many cases, to death. Up until the time uh, that the uh, transatlantic slave trade was abolished in 1808, and it still continued after that. People were still bringing over um, enslaved brothers and sisters. But up until that time, they figured they worked you to death and just get more. Uh, they did not. It wasn't as though they were kind to the females and say, hey, you go home and, you know, you peel some potatoes and watch the children's and the men will go out and do all the work. It did not work that way. They worked us right alongside those men. As a matter of fact, our protectors, they intentionally removed the fathers, the husbands, the sons, the brothers, the uncles, the nephews, the men 
they took them and they sold them and they removed them to ensure that that family dynamic was broken down. They did not have any regard for the family. As a matter of fact, we weren't even considered human. We were chattel. And even after we were supposedly free from enslavement, um, they had vagrancy laws that they used in order to enslave the men, once again, by way of the prison camps, uh, the chain gangs, if you will. And the black women, once again, were left to work and fend for themselves. The children were left on their own. The children were left on their own many a time. The eldest children were left in charge of those children because mom had to work. And she had to bust her behind to not only take care of those children, she was also going out there trying to take care of dad, her brothers, because this system targeted the men. It targeted them. But what you need to understand in doing so, when it targeted the man, when it took her support away, she was hit with a double whammy. She had to be mommy, but try to do the work of daddy in order to ensure that there was a home, there was clothes, there was food to eat. And it forced a strength out of her that in many cases she did not know she had, she did not want to have. But this was a governmental systematic breakdown attack of us as a people, over time, this continued until uh, what, what, it, there was that um, thing they did, uh, I can't remember the name of it, where blacks were supposed to be given an opportunity, but what they actually did was they gave more opportunities to the black women. Uh, but you want, once again, you have to understand the black woman was not allowed to sit at home and raise her children. When she did, uh, many of our own people sometimes would call her, you being uppity, lazy. Okay, but white women, oh, you think you a lady. You were supposed to go out and work. Okay, my mother worked in white people's houses, taking care of their children, um, cleaning their homes. As a matter of fact, Many of the jobs that we were allowed as people, the women normally clean, cook, watch white people's kids, did uh, hair. There was a very strong limitation on the, the job fields that we could enter into. And that was equally as intense with the men. They were normally always manual labor jobs. The men were porters. Uh, but they were not those office working jobs. Okay. Yes, the black woman wanted more for herself and for her family, as did the black man. She was not part of a feminist movement. The white women looked over at her and said, hey, get on board. The black woman was looking to get anything I can get, anything I can do to help myself, my people, and my man, I will do. I, like I said, when I had neighbors, I, I literally had one white woman get jealous because I would get up in the morning and I would put on the best clothes that I could find and fix myself up and uh, go to work. And she got jealous. I thought I was somebody. What she did not know that it, without my income combined with my husband's, we wouldn't have had our house. And it wouldn't have mattered whether I went back to my original neighborhood, which was in the hood, and ain't nothing wrong with the hood, but I was tired of gunshots and bodies and, and feeling like my two sons may not live to see manhood, okay? Uh, I became very strong because before I got married, the corner my son was on, and I kept getting him off of, had a body count of, I believe, six males. And I had a goal. We were going to get out of that neighborhood. My son was going to live to be a man. Yes, I was a very strong black woman. And I wasn't going to play any games about it. I was that same black, strong black woman that went on that street corner with my teenage son and grabbed him off the corner and told him, we will wrestle over here before you stand here. And I watched them take you away in a body bag. That's who I was. 
Did his father spend the time with him? He should have. No. Did I use that as a crutch or a reason to say, hey, I give up? No. I'll be mommy and daddy. And really, I wasn't being daddy. I was being the best black mother I could be. I was being the best mother I could be. So when you speak of feminism, black women don't belong in that sentence. That was something white women did. When we as a people were allowed to go and get higher learning, higher education. Yes, black women did go to school because they were willing to put the black women in jobs that they weren't willing to give the black man. But when we were in those jobs, we were ridiculed, made to feel inferior, made to feel. I remember uh, one of the white women telling me, you know, uh, it's okay that you're uneducated. It's okay that we know you grew up in the slums. I'm like, I, you don't even know me. I just work here. But all of these people just assume by my skin tone alone, I was uneducated. I grew up in a slum and that it was okay for me uh, to not know anything, to not expect anything. I had one woman tell me that, of course, your people weren't. She was shocked when she found out I was in college. She was shocked. And she said, you know, you don't need education. Your people don't need education. We need people to do manual labor. That's what your people are for. These are words I heard in the early 2000s. I went back to school. Okay. And I was stunned. So uh, I had a white man tell me when I wanted, I went back to school. My supervisor actually started trying to change my hours. He told me, oh, you think you're going to be somebody. It to constantly say these negating statements to attack black women as though we all fall under one umbrella. As though what we did was to harm the black man is beyond words. When in fact, we were in that same cauldron with him, that same crucible of pain, that same crucible of racism, that same crucible of disrespect, that same intended hopelessness, that same, I want to put a glass ceiling over your head type bosses and supervisors, make a joke like you have no feelings, that it doesn't matter about you as a person. I went back to school. Yes, I did. And every time I thought of what that white woman said, every time I thought of what my supervisor said, I picked that book up and went and reread it twice. Then I had to deal with the fact that the professors in the school were insulting. The people in the classes were insulting. Okay, one professor, when he started asking questions and I kept raising my hand because I knew the answer, he told me, you actually read. I mean, you, you, you actually are reading. He wasn't saying it like, oh, you're a good student. I'm glad you're following along in the chapter. Like, you actually do read. Then he told me, you know, okay, well, you may graduate, but there's a very good chance you won't be getting those jobs. You know, that's a Republican stronghold. And they hire people that are much like themselves. I mean, they were trying to teach me to give up. So when I hear these statements, it's, unconscionable to me about all this negativity about black women like we didn't get out behind what right beside the black man whether he was there literally or figuratively okay um one of the other things is when we became educated yes we wanted the man to get educated too we wanted him to come up with us whether he chose to do so or not is a whole nother kind of conversation but something is so twisted right now uh, anytime somebody can talk about a black woman being part of a feminist movement no when we did find our way into um the, polit the political arena the economic arena the education arena. It was not for self. It wasn't for self elevation. It was always for the betterment of our families and our men. Somebody had to be that person. Even a little black girl, Rupi Bridges, 
okay? Little child. But whoever had to be the first was going to be the first to get us through those doors. Doors that should have never been closed to any of us. One of the other things I want to speak on that a lot of people don't understand, when you do get these disrespectful females, because yes, they are out there. Oh, definitely. I run into them all the time. One of the things I know is, and it happened to me, although I can't speak for all of them, people talk about the fact that the black man doesn't have a male figurehead at home. He, a lot of fathers are absent. They may be being raised by stepfathers in time, but a lot of times the father isn't there. Um, by death, incarceration, breakup, uh, he's not there in some cases. My father was killed when I was three years old. I had no idea what it was like to have a father. What people, what a lot of men don't understand, just like a young male needs a, a, a good father figure, so does the female. She needs that man teaching her her value and her worth. Okay, I'm married now, been married for 20 years. I have a daughter with my husband, and he teaches my daughter. I'm amazed because those are things I never heard from a father because my father died. You have these young women out here that they think, hey, I'll use my body. I'll use my face. I'll get loud to get attention. I'll be profane. Some of the sisters call themselves bitches or whores. They call each other bitches and whores. I listen to the young brothers. I'm going to go get my bitch. I'm going to go get my hoe. My God, you're talking about, first and foremost, you are talking about your sister. And if she's with you, and when I say your sister, I mean a black woman or a black female whereby you're a black male. Um, at the same time, some of these men or these young men, you know, well, I'm going to hit it and split it. And I tell them all the time because I work with young people, you need to be very careful because you can lay down two and get up three. And you sitting back saying all these things about this female who may end up being the mother of your child. And if you think you're going to walk away, you might want to think just a little bit longer and look at it a little bit deeper because there's going to be another man telling your child what to do. And that child that she has may come out looking like you and because you left her and mistreated her some because she hasn't been taught. She may have an anger towards that little boy or that little girl because they look like you. And there's got to be strong men and women teaching and guiding both the male and the female, because a lot of us have not grown up with a father figure in the home. So, and I tell females all the time, okay, you're not a bitch. You're a princess. You, 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 you're beautiful. Um, you shouldn't have to show your behind or lower your shirt to hit cleavage on him. You need to be able to keep him long after. All of that's been seen because everybody got the TNA. Everybody got it. Okay. You need to know he cares about you. You need to see him look you in your eye and see something in his face that says he cares about you as a person. By the same token, because he doesn't have a father. He's learning about young men on rap videos and street corners and in the schoolyard and in the hallways. And, you know, because there's no lead for them. So, yes, a lot of females are extremely disrespectful, as are a lot of young males. And we have to teach each other. That's one of the things that I was saying in previous videos. I will continue to say, um, when I first married my husband, because I had not been around marriages, I had not been, I had never witnessed a good marriage. I had never been around it. When me and him got into a bad argument, I thought that was it. Oh, the marriage is over. He going to divorce me. I'm divorce. It's over. And he he looked at me. Thank God. God gave me a man. Um, he said you don't get divorced because you had a bad argument. And I'm like, but this is the part where you break up. No. People, people argue. People have disagreements. I said things I wish I hadn't said. And when I would get angry, I would say things I should have never said. But I also learned to outgrow it. I learned through his love. I was amazed he stayed with me, to be honest. Because when I got angry, I was firing at will. And I mean, fire at will. 
But he didn't fire back the same way. And it taught me. I watched the way he acted. I watched the way he spoke to me. And it taught me how to be. Because I had never seen it. I, I used to tell him, I've never seen a true marriage, a good marriage between a black couple. My father, he died. I was three years old when he got killed. So I, I have no reference point. My aunt and uncle who were married, they were older. So that was, it didn't show me. I never saw them get into a fight. And when I say a fight, I'm not talking fist fight. I'm talking about a disagreement where I understood that they worked it out. That, that they figured out how to forgive each other. They, 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 they knew how to let it go. I, I didn't learn that from them. As a matter of fact, Somebody gave me a beautiful gift on my wedding day. Uh, it was one of the people I worked with. It was a man. And he told me, as a matter of fact, it wasn't on my wedding day. It was before the wedding. I invited him. He told me he wouldn't be able to come. He handed me a card, you know, with a little bit of gift in it. But he told me, I want to give you a gift. And in order to give it to you, I've got to tell it to you. And he said, you got to learn how to forgive each other if you want to be married. And for the work, a marriage is like a house. You have to, it, it, it needs maintenance, it needs care in order for that house to be strong. Let it go. When you two get into arguments, because they're going to come, let it go. Forgive him. And he forgives you, and then you keep going. And when those horrible arguments will happen, because they do, I remembered his words, and it was like, forgive him. Let it go. Here's the other thing. Forgive yourself because we do stuff too. Um, I'll be a lot to say I didn't have moments where I spoke words that I, I really wish I had not spoken. I don't do that anymore like that. Although I can get angry and say some things that I shouldn't. But I've learned over the years. And um, you, he, I, I've had my own children just from witnessing my marriage um say you know mom they don't talk about getting a girlfriend or a boyfriend in the end they talk about one day my husband my wife okay so i i tried to set the example yes there are black women who they need teaching they are black men that need teaching we're growing but we should not be compared to something that we're not. Um, we need to lead with love. We need to lead with love and recognize that this has been a struggle. This is the land of our captivity. This was not all soft and fluff. Do some women act controlling? Yes, they do. But you have, I mean, but I don't want to get into a blame game. And the reason I don't want to is because I listen to some men go, I need a sister with a good job. She got a nice apartment. She rolling. I need to hook up with her. He's looking to move up through the female. And my statement to him is, um, you know, what are you bringing to the table? You know, and before you move in with her, you, what, what plan do you have of marrying her and making her your wife? She would make pretty babies. No, she'd make a beautiful bride. Yours. Okay. These are the things that we have to teach one another. All right. Like I said, yes, you have good men and you have good women out here. Some good women, the men are looking for them to lean on. And the female gets frustrated. She gets frustrated because it's a weight. Carrying all that responsibility. I know because there was a strong point in my life I had to do it. And did I sound soft spoken when I had to do it? No. No. And if I thought you were one of those use me kind of guys, normally before the door, before you got warm in the chair, you had to go. Once I knew, oh, this is the user. No, I needed a man. And God was good. He sent me a man. That's why we've been together 20 years, up and downs, the changes we've gone through. But the man being a leader, the natural leader, um, he needs to lead those sisters into understanding who they are. You can't do that by means of a put down. And yes, some women do scream and curse. They do. 
they do. It is tragic. But I guarantee you, if you speak to a lot of them, what you find out is they never had a father figure in their life. They didn't have somebody to tell them there's another way. And I've done it. I've done it where the sister is screaming and cussing, yo, you mf and you da 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 And instead of putting it down, and I watch it turn around because I work with young people, okay, um, what I would do a lot of times is tell the sisters, you know, when you were walking up, I thought how nice you looked, how well your hair was um set. You look good, girl. And then when you started cursing, girl, that cursing, that profanity is beneath you. It starts taking away from your beauty. When you talk like that, you don't understand how much it diminishes you. And you don't understand how admiring people are of you before they hear you speak that way. And do you know a lot of them young females won't talk that way around me anymore? They'll stop or they'll think, not so much just around me, they will stop, they'll diminish the profanity. They'll diminish it. And then they'll come back and tell me, you were right, you were right. And I'm like, watch how people respond to you. You are detracting from yourself, your beauty. And there's a way we teach each other and we reach each other. Okay, some people, it takes a while to get the message through. It does. They don't get it on the first try. That's why Jesus, he would use example after example when he spoke to the people. And I just want to say that this isn't a uh, male bashing because the brothers are learning too. They're learning too. And God bless the good men. But you have to remember, we were systematically separated. None of us, not the man nor the woman, tried to put this thing together this way. That woman was carrying weight. Even in the book of Jeremiah, and I'm going to read this. It states, um, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22. How long will you waver, O faithless daughter? He's talking about Israel. Then he said, for the Lord has created a new thing on the earth. A woman encompasses a man, encompasses, she's protecting him. And at the same time, she had to surround him in order to keep that house strong. Does she want to be able to sit back and learn how to be whatever woman the man believes she should be? Sure she does. But you got to remember, we grew up in this crucible. We came through a system that it intentionally undermined us. It sold children, it sold husbands, it sold wives. It raped the men and the women and the children within the sight of each other to break. It wasn't just an attack of our bodies. Our minds were attacked. Having to see the treatment that we all were going through, trying to stay strong enough to make it from one day to the next. So once again, I'm going to refer back to a previous message where I said, we have to do this thing with love. We have to do it with love. Okay. Um, if black women wanted to get further it's because they want to take the nation further. Anytime they want to get into these particular arenas, it's because they know this systematic um, uh, governmental attacks that have been going on since we were brought here. There were laws put in place to ensure our demise or to ensure our oppression. Same laws that never apply to the Europeans. But we were held on a standard so far above anything we could truly hope to, to fulfill. It was unfair. We had shackles on our feet, hobbled in, our, it hobbled in the legs and ankle, and told to run, run, run. And if you don't run, we're going to put the dogs on you. And you know what? If we could hands and, our, and anything else we had, because we were going to make it. So... Me, I say, be encouraged, brothers and sisters. You're shining. You're growing. This process does take time. But as equal as you have females that are out there speaking in a manner they shouldn't, 
You have males doing the same thing. Okay? You also have very good men and very good women. And we're all growing as a nation. This 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 awakening is moving. It's 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 got levels, it's got um it's got so many transition points that God Almighty Himself is the only one that knows what we are gonna become. We don't even remember who we were, how we were, what we really were like before we were brought here. How we thought. We have an idea, but we really don't know. So I say be encouraged. We're not going to do the blame game. And when we are not talking right, be it male or female, we will instruct one another. Older men, be fathers to these young women. Instead of speaking cruelly to them, tell them. You're a little princess. You're going to grow up to be a queen. And princesses don't talk like that. That's beneath you. You're better than that. And when you tell them that, it always gives them pause. As pretty as you are, I can't believe I hear those words coming out of your mouth. You look like the kind of person that will always speak well. And I think you're capable. And say something nice. Wish them to have a good day. I do it with the young men and the young women. And slowly but surely, they start turning around because they're still growing. They're having a growth spurt, not only of the awakening. They're going through a growth spurt that you go through. Some people, even though chronologically they appear grown, I'm, this is a whole nother set I'm speaking on. Chronologically, they seem grown. Some of them, emotionally, mentally, they have not grown up. They did not have guidance or they had the wrong person in their ear talking to them. So you have to be that right person. Um, once again, this is a positive message of support. And like I said, the only way we as a nation are going to come together is we have to be each other's support. And I still support my brothers as well as my sisters. I've never in my life known a man as beautiful as a black man. Ever. I've never known a woman so beautiful as a black woman. And the potential. I would say we are equal to a diamond in the rough. A diamond in the rough. It's cloudy. It's been in the dirt. Buried. Like Valley of Dry Bones buried away for so long that many people, when they pick it up, they think, ah, oh, this is just some old stone. But it takes a beautiful eye. The eye of God that God gives us, that eagle eye. Okay, to see, wait a minute, you know, if I take the right chisel and a nice hammer, the hammer of love and the chisel of truth, and I hit it just so on that edge, when that piece broke off, it starts shining and dazzling when the sun hits it. It's a diamond. It's a diamond. Some people throw it away like it's just mere glass. But when you got the right eye, you know what you're holding in your hand. And you can make it shine with a brilliance that's blinding to the eye. That's who we are. He's getting rid of the dross, like a piece of gold that's been in the muck and mire. But God's washing off the dross of the gold. We're like that diamond that looks like a cloudy stone. But God sent the jewel cutter, who knows what it is, that Holy Spirit. And his word of life, the jewel and the gem cutter. And he's using that chisel of truth and that hammer of love. Cutting off those rough edges and making it brilliant in the end. Brilliant. Be, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. That's the song of all of us. That's our song. Please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. I don't hold anything people have done in a hateful eye because I've made my own mistakes. I'm working out my own salvation with fear and trembling. 
And brothers and sisters, you be encouraged to work your own out. This message is a message of love and truth. Peace. I think it's still recording once again. I am still learning every time I try to stop this machine. You know, please be patient with me. It's just perfect for me to say. But I said, God is not through with me yet because I'm still learning the video. Hmm. Shalom.